Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us for our online worship service for Sunday, May 17th. We're so happy to have you with us this morning. We worship as we live our lives. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll begin this morning with a thanksgiving for baptism. And so we invite you to take a pause just for a second here to uh, find a small dish of water, a cup or a dish or something, uh, because during the Thanksgiving for baptism, we will invite you to use that water to mark the sign of the cross on yourself and on anyone else who is, in, uh, who is worshiping with you. So take a moment and find a, a little bit of water and then come back and continue. Today, our scripture readings are about love, and baptism is one of the tangible ways that God loves us. So we give thanks. We give thanks for baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the waters of the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. Through the waters of the well you invited outsiders into your kingdom. And through the waters of the river your son Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Through the waters of the sink, we wash our hands clean. Through the waters we drink, we nourish our bodies. Through the waters of our tears, we share our grief and joy. Through the waters of the rain, all creation grows. Through the waters of baptism, you claim us as your beloved children. Through the waters of baptism, you wash us clean from sin. And through the waters of baptism, you renew our lives with forgiveness and love and grace. We invite you at this time to mark your forehead and those of each person with you with the sign of the cross. Remember how God washed you with water at your baptism. Remember how God continues to wash you every day. As you bless one another, say aloud, you are marked by this water as a beloved, forgiven child of God. You are marked by this water as a beloved, forgiven child of God. Let us pray. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. We praise you for the gift of new life through Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and keep us floating in the promise of forgiveness, love, and grace. Let us walk each day through the water of baptism into lives of service, love, and peace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We'll join in song. Our opening song is Baptized and Set Free, number 453 in the hymnal. We are people created, chosen by God. Then we're washed ever gently in mercy and love. Sin has power no more. Jesus opened the door to a fountain bringing healing and wholeness and more. We are fed and we're nourished, filled and refreshed. Then our hunger returns and again we are blessed for whatever the God is greater indeed, endless ocean, always deeper than all of our need. 
Let us pray. Loving Lord, you have showered your world with faith, hope, and love. Help us to be faithful to you, to offer hope to those in need, and to love all your children. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture lesson today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Um, some familiar words that we um, often read at weddings. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 12. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked Jesus, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. So we have some scripture verses about love. Mm -hmm. um, and so we think about love in our, in our culture, the way we talk about it. There are so many different ways that we can show love to other people. Um, and it's usually using words or actions um, that we show love to people. Saying some, to someone, I love you, or showing them that you love them by making them food, or giving them a gift, or mowing their lawn, or, you know, whatever it is. There's all sorts of these different ways. Um, you know, it, um, at a wedding, we exchange rings with each other. Um, at, at birthdays, we exchange gifts with each other, um, you know, flowers at Mother's Day, these are all sorts of things that are um, at least supposed to <laughs> mm -hmm. show love to one another. Um, and I think it can be a lot easier to see how we love other people through those words and actions than to think about the way that God loves us. Because God isn't going to send you flowers on Mother's Day. <laughs> but, he, but he does love in concrete ways. Yes. It's not just an abstract kind of love. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but we need to learn how to look for that mm -hmm. um, because it's not going to be a card that's signed, I love you, from God. <laughs> um, yeah. But we get that message from God all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, we just need to learn how to look for it. And I think one of the really great tangible ways that we get love from God is through baptism. Yeah. Um, one of the first ways we experience that in our lives is through baptism. And that's a way that God says, I love you, throughout our lives. It doesn't change. Or it does change. It mm -hmm. just never goes away. Um, it's not a, like one time, like I told you I loved you once, why would I need to say it again? Mm -hmm. God says that through baptism over and over. Yeah, God isn't Norwegian where he can't right. do right. that. Right, I already yeah. told you, why would I, yeah, why yeah. would I need to do it again? So, yeah. An image that comes to my mind when you talk about love and, and, and water is that idea that if a fish had a human consciousness, if you went to the fish and say, do you see the, do you see the ocean? And the, oceans, the fish would say, what ocean? Because it's always there. Mm -hmm. and, and God's love is always there. But like you said, we don't always see it. Yeah. Um, I think baptism is that touchstone that gives us the eyes to see, at least to see that love, that that love is f for me yeah. and for you. Yeah. yeah. That we can feel it, the physical water we yeah. can feel. And yeah. then whenever we're drinking water or bathing in water or whatever, like we can remember that too. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther said, or at least is supposed to have said, yeah. whenever you wash your face, remember your baptism. Um, which I imagine we're all doing quite a lot lately. 
that we think about that, that God is in that normal everyday thing, that it's not just these like big mountaintop things where God mm -hmm. shows love to us. It's in the everyday, like you take a drink of water because you're thirsty and you wash your hands because you wash your hands. Um, that God's love is in that, that in everyday normal things in addition to the big um, extreme things that we yeah. get God's love. God, I mean, that's, that's what's so important, I think, with baptism is that understanding that God's love is always there. Yeah. God's love is everywhere. Um, and this, during this time of the coronavirus, um, we, hear, we need to know that even more. God doesn't want any of that. God suffers with us in that. But God's in the midst of that, mm -hmm. saying, I love you. You are mm -hmm. my beloved. Yeah. yeah. So. I think for me, one of the most powerful things, thinking about how God expresses love through baptism, um, is that it's completely unconditional. Yeah. That when we come to baptism, it doesn't matter how sinful we are. Um, it doesn't matter how much we've messed up in our lives. It doesn't matter how much we've tried to run away from God. Um, God welcomes us in open arms um, at baptism. You know, we, we think about unconditional love, I think particularly from parents, you know, that they're going to love you no matter what. And mm -hmm. obviously some people's parents have a harder time with that. But God, God will welcome us here, no matter how dirty we are before we come, no matter how dirty we get after it. You know, God's going to be there and love us no matter what we do. Um, Obviously, God wants us to do well and to be loving and to live lives of service and to do good things, um, but God is not going to run away from us or turn away from us just because we mess up. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really profound because I, I mess up all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and to know that that doesn't matter, that God's not going to turn away from me because of that, that um, there's nothing I can do to make God stop loving me. Um, it's just mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the best news I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. And then we get to share that. Yes. You know, no, we fall way short <laughs> of unconditional love. But that's, that's what we aim for, is to share that unconditional love uh, with others yeah. and to love people unconditionally. Um, that's the whole idea when Jesus says, love your enemies. Yeah. You know, the, the only way to do that is that, well, people don't have to earn their, our love. Yeah. That we can love them unconditionally. Yeah. That's hard, but right. God gives us that gift right. by him, by God loving us unconditionally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's who we try to be as a Christian community. This isn't, for, this isn't a place for people who have already figured it out. Mm -hmm. This is a place for people who are like, hey, I'm broken and I need God's help. Um, I'm still figuring it out as I go. <laughs> yeah. um, that you don't need to be perfect. You can come here when you are in addiction and depression and when you are you know, struggling with relationships when you're like, whatever it is, you come here and we will love you and we will help you find God's love and presence in your life. You don't need to be perfect to be part of a Christian community, no. which is good because otherwise none of us could be here. No. <laughs> <And> <laughs> that's why we, us. <laughs> and that's why we start worship with uh, references to baptism. Yeah. With confession, forgiveness and making the sign of the cross um, to remind us we're all in this together. We're all in need of God's unconditional love. Yeah. Awesome. Well, while we could talk about this all day. <laughs> we, yeah, <laughs> and love it. <laughs> yeah, and love it, seriously. Um, every pastor's dream is to talk about um, baptism all day to people who have a, are a captive audience. We're going to sing. Um, the hymn is You Are Mine, number 581. Uh, this is based on a text from Isaiah, is it 42 or 43? Anyway, it's God saying, God saying you are mine uh, to us, God claiming us, which is what happens through baptism. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fears. You will hear my voice, I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. 
Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. I am hope for all who are hopeless. I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home, I love you and you are mine. A few announcements for our ongoing ministry together. Uh, we want everyone to um, join us for some of our regular weekly events, such as our online Facebook Bible studies um, and our Sunday morning Zoom. Uh, please note that our Sunday morning Zoom uh, worship and conversation this week on the 17th will happen at 9 o'clock a.m. Um, and that will happen at 9 o'clock because at 10 a.m. Uh, we'll be having a, a drive-through reception for the Chatfield Lutheran graduates. Um, and then at 11 for the Root Prairie graduates. Um, so at 10 to 10.30, you're welcome to drive through the Chatfield Lutheran parking lot to, to wave and say congratulations and celebrate our seniors. Um, and then at 11 uh, at Root Prairie uh, to uh, greet and uh, wave and cheer for um, the seniors. So uh, please um, plan to attend that if you are able. Um, we do have some upcoming events, including on Friday the 22nd, we'll have an at-home prayer vigil, uh, so please keep an eye out for um, information on that to sign up for um, a time to pray throughout that day. We also want to thank everyone for the, uh, the generosity of offerings that you have continued to use to support our congregations. Uh, please continue to send in uh, your offerings through the mail or through um, online giving. Um, that supports the ministry we do now um, online as well as the future ministries when we gather back together. So thank you uh, for supporting God's work in this place through your offerings. Let us join in prayer. Holy God, we lift up to you our prayers for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, we pray for all people affected by the coronavirus. Give strength, patience, and good health to all who work with patients, all who are isolated, all who are working with the public, and all who are making tough decisions. Give wisdom to all leaders and keep the health and well-being of their communities in mind. Help us to love and support one another through meaningful conversation and creative connections. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy God, we give thanks for creation. Grant favorable weather for farmers in the fields and their new crops. Help all your people to care for creation with creativity and boldness, that the whole world and all people may flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we mourn as a community for all that we have lost. We grieve with students and teachers who are missing concerts and plays, graduations, parties, and hugs goodbye. We grieve for the funerals, the weddings, and the celebrations that haven't happened in the expected way. We grieve for VBS and mission trips and vacations that we had planned and won't happen. We grieve for everyday things like hugs and visits and play dates. Help us to support and sustain one another. Hold our pain and give us hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for all people who are facing difficulties. Calm the anxious, comfort the lonely and grieving, heal the sick, 
Thank you for carrying all our burdens and brokenness with love. Today we pray especially for Al and Nathaniel, Dick and Irvin and Tim and Erica, Lonnie and Chuck and Adam and Andrea, Riley and Mary and Shirley, Jerry, Jack and Randy and Tom, Chris, Kathy, Deborah, Jane and Rick, Jenny, Kayla, James, Jake, Nancy, and all those we name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your gracious mercy and love unto life everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>